I've been using the X-T5 for a few weeks now, both for photo documentary projects and for some personal work. How can you not when you have a brand new puppy? And so far, I'm very happy with the upgrade over the X-T4, which was my workhorse for years before this. I did just complete the X-T5 tutorial course, which you can find at photocourses.link slash X-T5. A lot of people have been asking me about the high ISO noise performance. With the increased resolution in this camera, there is some worry that the high ISO noise performance is degraded. So shortly after the new year, I'll have a video comparing the X-T4 high ISO with the X-T5 high ISO performance. And if you know me at all, you probably already know what my conclusion is going to be. But like I said, I'll have that out after the new year. One of the first things I do when I get any new camera, whether I buy a camera or I rent a camera, is I customize the menus and controls. All of my Fujifilm cameras have nearly identical custom menus and custom controls for consistency when I pick up one camera after using another. But having these custom menus and custom controls helps me work more efficiently. I can work faster, I can work more accurately. And it's something that I think every Fujifilm photographer should be doing. You can really customize these cameras quite a bit. So for the remainder of this video, what I want to do is share with you the two video lessons from my X-T5 tutorial course talking about customizing the menus and customizing the controls. So without any further ado, here we go, the two excerpts from the X-T5 tutorial course. One thing that I would really recommend you do to improve your photography is to create your own custom menus. When you create your own custom menus, you become more efficient using the camera. And when you can use the camera more efficiently, your photography will improve. There are two custom menus that you can create, and we're going to start by looking at My Menu. My Menu is a consolidation of all of your most used menu options into one menu page or two menu pages if you have a lot of options that you want to put in there. So if you're constantly changing the same several settings across the image quality, focus, and shooting menus, instead of scrolling through those big lists trying to find those settings in the sea of other settings, you can have your favorites all right there in one menu. It really makes navigating the menus much more convenient. To set up my menu, press the menu button, go into the setup menu, user settings, then select my menu. You'll see two options there, one for still photography mode and one for movie mode. When you go into my menu setting, select add items, and then you're going to see a list of all of your menu options. Nearly every menu item is available to put into my menu, except for most of the setup menu options. All you need to do is scroll through the list of menu options, highlight the one that you want to include in your custom menu, and press OK. When you press OK, you'll be taken to the screen that will show you what your My Menu currently looks like. You can reorder the items using the joystick up or down, making settings that you change most often appear towards the top of the menu, and then less used menu options appear towards the bottom. Just repeat this process for all of the settings that you want to add until you are complete. When you are complete, just press the back button to complete the setup. You can include up to 16 items in my menu on two pages. If you ever want to go in and reorder anything, go back into the my menu setting under user settings and then select rank items. Select the item that you want to move up or down in the list, press okay to highlight it and then move it to its new position. Just press back when you're complete. If you ever want to delete anything, remove something from my menu that you found you really don't use and you want to make room for something else, again, go into the My Menu setting menu and select Remove Items. Select the item that you want to remove, press OK, and then follow the prompts. So what do you include in my menu? Well, it's going to take a little while for you to figure out which settings that you use the most. 
What I would not include in my menu are the image styling settings, things like film simulation, highlight tone, shadow tone. I prefer to keep all of those in the Q menu. The Q menu, which we'll look at next, is my image styling menu. My menu is for all of the other menu options. I will have some recommendations in the text outline for this video of things for you to consider for including in my menu. But just use the camera, spend some time with it, figure out which settings that you most often change, and then include those in my menu. The next custom menu that I would really recommend you set up is the Q menu. I like to think of the Q menu as my image styling menu, but you can put whatever you want in it. So if you're in shooting mode and you want to change the style of the photo by changing the film simulation or the color or the highlight tone, then you can just press the Q button to do that immediately in the Q menu itself instead of having to go through the regular camera menus to change image styling. To program the Q menu, go into the Setup menu, Button Dial Setting, and then Edit Save Quick Menu. Again, there are separate Q menus for Still Photography Mode and Movie Mode. The Q menu can contain 4, 8, 12, or 16 slots. All but the first one are customizable. That first one is reserved for the custom setting. Select how many slots you want to use and program it in this menu. To quickly reprogram the Q menu in shooting mode, you can just press and hold the Q button to enter the Q menu setup screen. To program each slot, all you need to do is use the joystick to highlight the slot that you want to change, press OK, and then select from the list which setting you want to assign to that slot. Press OK and it will show up in that slot, and then just repeat the process for all of the different slots that you want to program, putting all of the different settings where you want them. When you're done programming it, you can just press the back button to save and exit. You can also choose to have either a black background or a transparent background in the Q menu. I like the transparent background because I can see what my changes are doing as I'm making those changes in the Q menu to preview what's happening. If you ever find that distracting or it's not important to you, then you can select the black background. To change the background, go into the screen setting menu and then Q menu background. To use the Q menu in shooting mode, all you need to do is press the Q button and then highlight which of these settings that you want to adjust. Use the command dial to adjust that setting and then press back when you're complete. Which settings should you include in the Q menu? Well, if we're putting all of our camera setup settings into my menu, then it makes sense to reserve the Q menu for all of our image quality settings. Because again, that's kind of what I and most other photographers use it for is to change the image styling settings, film simulation, highlight tone, shadow tone, color, things like that. I will also have some recommendations for what to include in the Q menu in the text outline for this lesson. But honestly, put whatever you want in there that makes sense for your workflow. It's just another tool available for you. These two menus are just some of the many ways that you can customize your camera for more efficient photography. In the next lesson, we're going to look at customizing the controls for how you want them for your style of photography. The final thing that we're going to customize to use this camera more efficiently are the custom function buttons. You don't have to accept the defaults for what each button does in terms of which functions they perform. Every photographer is different. Every photographer has a different workflow and style. And so you can customize these controls to do nearly any function that you want based on your workflow. To see a map of what all the different buttons do, Press the menu button, go into the setup menu, button dial setting, and then the function FN setting. There's a shortcut to see this map and program it from shooting mode. Just press and hold the display back button. The difference in doing it this way is it will also allow you to pair a camera to Bluetooth and turn Bluetooth on and off. This map is a good reminder of what all of your controls do if you ever forget, and this is also where we're going to program them. To reprogram any of these controls, just scroll through and select the control that you want to change, 
press OK, and then you'll see a list of all of the different functions that can be assigned to that control. Different functions are available depending on the type of control you choose, such as a physical button versus the touchscreen gestures, swiping up, down, left, or right. You'll also see some functions that are not available elsewhere in the camera, such as a large histogram or preview depth of field. Go down and highlight the function that you want to assign to that control and press OK. Remember that if you do want to use the touchscreen gestures, those need to be enabled in the touchscreen setting menu in the button dial setting menu. If you're using a power zoom lens, don't forget you can also customize those controls in the next submenu. Like the custom menus, I'm not going to preach to you what you should do for your custom controls. This is something that you're just going to have to work through based on the kind of photographer that you are. I don't know what kind of functions you want to have quick access to. That's a decision that you're going to have to make on your own, kind of like the custom menus. So spend some time using your camera, make note of the functions you want to be able to change quickly with your controls, which controls you want to use for each function, and make note of those. Program it that way, try it out, and then reprogram it if necessary. I still reprogram my custom controls every now and then as my workflow changes. And you also need to practice this. Get that muscle memory so you know exactly where your fingers need to go to access those different functions. I will have some recommendations in the text for this video with some of the functions that I think are important. For example, being able to quickly enable or disable face and eye detection, select a different auto ISO program, lock my auto white balance, and so on. Those are all things that I want to be able to change without having to go into any menus so I have them programmed to custom function controls. That's what this is for. And then the final thing we can customize are our custom settings or what you may have heard on the internet referred to as film recipes. Using these, we can take those film simulations and further customize them to our own liking by adjusting color, contrast, and more. These are going to give you your own styling options. If you want a very vivid, high contrast style for landscapes, for example, you can create a landscape preset. And then if you're going to photograph a portrait right after that landscape, you can go to your portrait preset, which might have some more muted colors and softer contrast. In this camera, new to Fujifilm cameras, you'll also save things like your shooting settings and focus settings. To program the custom settings, all you need to do is go through your image quality, focus, shooting and flash menu settings and adjust everything how you want it for that custom setting. Then go to the very end of the image quality setting menu, the edit save custom setting option and select which one of those custom setting banks you want to save these settings to. Press OK and follow the confirmation dialog to save the current settings. You should also at this point assign that custom setting a name so you can remember what that setting is. So go back into the edit save custom settings, highlight the custom setting that you just created and press OK, then select edit custom name. Use the little keypad to give it a name that you'll remember. If you want to duplicate that setting and maybe slightly tweak something in the new setting, you can select copy and choose which custom setting slot you want to copy those settings to. If you ever want to change any of the individual settings saved to a particular custom setting, go back into the edit save custom setting menu, highlight the one that you want to change and press OK, then select edit check. Scroll through the list of settings, highlight the setting that you want to change and change it, and press back when you're complete. If save the changes is available in the menu, you'll need to select save the changes and press OK. If save the changes is grayed out, it's not available. That's because you have auto update custom setting enabled. When this is enabled, any changes that you make, including while shooting, will automatically update that custom setting with the changes you made. If your custom four setting has the zone autofocus mode program to it, but you change your autofocus mode to spot while using that custom setting, 
spot is now automatically saved as the new autofocus mode. If you do want to enable this, go back to the image quality setting menu and enable auto update custom setting. If this is disabled, any camera setting you change while using a custom setting will not be saved to that setting. Instead, you'll see red dots next to those settings that were changed from the original custom setting. You have the option of saving those settings to this custom setting if you choose to. Go to the Edit Save Custom Setting menu, select the custom setting that you're using, and select Save the Changes. To reset the settings to the original custom setting, select Reset the Changes. This again is an evolving process. It's something that you're going to be changing for as long as you own the camera. Trust me, I'm constantly changing these, but I'm refining them towards a goal. My goal is to pre-process my photos, setting the style and the mood that's appropriate for the story I'm telling with my photos, and get those images in the camera rather than in post-processing. If you are interested in developing your own film recipes further, and learning how to get these JPEGs correct in the camera at Capture, I have dedicated courses for those which are included in the Fujifilm Photographer Membership. But just take some time and see which combination of image quality settings you like the most for different subjects. To quickly change from one custom setting to another, you can come back into the image quality setting menu and do that with the select custom setting option, but I like to do this in the Q menu with the select custom setting option. I press the Q button, highlight the custom setting, and use the command dial to scroll through the different custom settings. So I hope you got something out of these videos. Like I said, it is something that's going to take some time to figure out to refine, but every photographer should be taking advantage of these features. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I'll see you in the next video.